Thanks for tuning in. This is the uh, second installment in the video series covering this Pluto X drone from Drona Aviation. My ultimate goal is to see if I can make it compatible with drone blocks. In the previous video, I covered a little bit about how it flies, how you manage it with the Android app. And in this video, we're going to get into the IDE and writing our first program. So we'll cover the installation and configuration of the Cygnus IDE, which is provided by Drona Aviation, as well as the first code example. So my first go at this will be in this video and let's go ahead and get started. I'll put a link to this document below, but the first step is to install and configure the Cygnus IDE. Looks like there is a download link. I've gone ahead and downloaded this, unzipped it for Mac OS. There's a Mac, Windows, and Linux version. I'm going to double click to launch this IDE. Okay, I can see that if you guys are not familiar with uh, Eclipse, this is based off of Eclipse. Uh, have a love-hate relationship with this IDE. I used to do a lot of uh, Java development. It's been a long time since I've messed around with it, but I'm going to set up a default workspace, just a folder on my computer so that it will save all of my projects there. Created a Cygnus Pluto X folder. We'll go ahead and launch into the IDE. Here we can see the uh, Project Explorer and just the standard panes that you normally get when you run Eclipse. Just reading through the documentation here, I'll go ahead and follow these steps. So I'm going to go to File, New, Pluto X Project. I'll go ahead and name it Test. We'll click Finish. Okay, it looks like we have some libraries here, our default script. It looks like there's an init function, a pilot start function, this loop. This is very similar to the structure of like a Arduino program. I believe this is C++, and then there's a pilot finish. And then part of the installation instructions say to check this platform folder, you can see a bunch of different header files as it relates to the Pluto X SDK, LED, motor, and a bunch of others, an altitude hold, control. So it looks like there's a fair amount of capabilities uh, with this Pluto X drone. The next step to verify our installation, there is this build button up here, this blue hammer and wrench. I'll go ahead and click it. You can see that it's building down here. Project has been built successfully. Looks like the Cygnus IDE is ready to go. So let's dive into uh, writing a script. So I'll go to a new Pluto X project. It's called my first code. Finish, we can see our setup functions. I'm gonna go back just to keep it simple and see if I can just copy and paste this entire program into plutopilot.c++. Okay, let me try to explain what's going on here based on what I know. We're importing or including some header files, LED control, altitude hold, and print. Those all come from this platforms folder with all the header files. Looks like there's no setup being done. And it looks like in the on pilot start function, we're gonna disable flight status, pass it a value of true. From what I understand, that basically means disable the LED status uh, when the program is started. Then the Pluto pilot function apparently just continuously loops. And this is where we have our logic to get the Z velocity. Uh, we'll turn the LED, turn the left LED on, right LED off when we're going up, and then vice versa when we're going down. We're going to print the altitude hold, get velocity Z, and we're going to, looks like, plot the estimated altitude on a graph. Now, I don't know where that graph will show up, but hopefully we can figure that out. Then on pilot finish, it looks like when we deactivate developer mode, and now if I recall, that's a mode that we enable through the uh, Pluto X app, the Android app that I'm currently using. So we'll turn that on and off. So I believe when the developer mode is on, we're going to initialize this script and then it's going to run. And then when we turn it off, we'll make this call to 
disable the flight status LEDs. So apparently we'll get the standard LED behavior when developer mode is turned off. That's my understanding of this script so far. So let's go ahead, I'll save it. And then let's see if I can build it. See down here, it looks like it's building. The project has been built successfully. Next step, and this is pretty cool. I really like this feature. I'll go ahead and power up Pluto X. We'll set it down. And what we can do is, I believe I'm going to look for it here in my network settings, just like we connected to it from Android. I'm now connecting to it from my MacBook. And we're going to uh, load this program onto Pluto X over Wi-Fi. Now that we're connected, I want to explain uh, two options here. There's a full flash and a normal flash. Have not done either, either of these before, but what I understand a full flash is when you first load maybe your script on here, you'll want to do a full flash, which will, I believe, reset uh, the sensor calibration, the magnetometer, accelerometer, you'll have to do all of that calibration but uh, I'm going to try to do a normal flash which will not reset those sensors and what I'm hoping to do because it'll be difficult to fly and do all this testing is when I enable developer mode I'll just move the drone up and down with my hand to see if we can read these values so here I'm going to go ahead and do the normal flash it says flashing uh, my first code which is the program we just reviewed and compiled now we're shipping it over to Pluto X via Wi-Fi. Firmware flashed successfully. I have to say that's a pretty handy feature without having to load code over USB. According to the documentation, it says when you flash your program on Pluto, it doesn't directly start executing. It's in default mode. We'll need to activate developer mode using Pluto controller, Android. So what I'll do now, I believe, is I'll connect to Pluto X with the Android app. I have the Pluto X app fired up. See, I'm connected to the Wi-Fi network, so I'm gonna close out of that. I'm gonna tap connect down here. Pluto connected. Okay, so that's pretty neat. I believe we have both my MacBook and the Android app connected to Pluto X. And so what we'll do now is I need to go into my developer settings for my profile, I'm going to edit. You can see that I have, I am a developer checked. I'm gonna save that. Go back to the menu. And down here below, there's a little icon that looks like a HTML tag or something. I guess that means when I toggle it, I'm in developer mode. Actually, you can see, watch the red LED on Pluto X. That comes on when I'm in developer mode and it'll turn off when I'm not. So. I'm in developer mode right now. What we need to do last, I believe, is there is this little green link icon. I'm going to go ahead and tap that and connect to Pluto X. So apparently we have a connection. And I did discover that with these tabs down here below, there is this Pluto graphs. Yeah, look at that feature. That's the red graph. now. I think it should be working. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go up and down with Pluto three times. Really cool, check that out. So we have our Z velocity being plotted. I don't know what the units on the left represent right now, but you can see the oscillations there from me going up and down. It looks like it's going to come back to somewhere between 50 and 60. There might be a little bit of interference here. So uh, we gotta take that into consideration. But the cool thing is, and you can maybe see the LEDs changing color as I go up and down. So it looks like it's executing uh, our code that we just built and loaded onto Pluto X. Now I wanna try one more thing which uh, differs from the My First Code core example. I'm gonna go down here and you can see that we have a print.red graph. Well, apparently there are three different graphs we can plot to, red, green, and blue. So I'm gonna change this call from print.red graph to print.green graph and I'll 
click the build button. Project has been built successfully. Then let's go do another normal flash. It looks like I ran into a bit of a problem trying to ship new code over to Pluto X. So what I did is I did a hard reset. We're connected to Pluto Dennis. Maybe there's a proper sequence of events when you're loading new code after you had a previous program on there. So I'll go ahead and build again and we're going to try to send this over now with the green graph enabled. Go to a normal flash. We'll see down here. It looks like it's flashing right now. Data is going across. That worked well. So our new program is on there with the green graph. Now I reconnected Android. You might be able to see that uh, we're no longer in developer mode. I think with each new flash, we need to enable that again. So I've gone ahead and turned that on. And now what I'll do is once again, I will connect and let's go to our Pluto graphs. Okay, looks like the green graph is moving, which is good. Yeah, there it is. Uh, this is obviously on a different scale than the others. I'll have to dive into that to really understand what it means, but once again, our LEDs are blinking. We can see our Z velocity being plotted on the green graph. I'll go ahead and let it settle. At this point in time, we have our code that we've loaded via Wi-Fi. We're connected from the MacBook that's getting sensor data, streaming it here, as well as from the Android tablet. Now, let me just do a quick test to see if I can arm. I'm not sure how that's gonna play out. Okay, yeah, that, that was able to arm. I disarmed real quick, just so we didn't flip this thing over. That was just a initial overview, me learning how to write a program. I'm not very familiar with all of the methods and capabilities yet, but demonstrated the process, how we can get data, how we enable developer mode, and ultimately we can do all of this uh, get this data and test while we're in the air. Thank you guys for following along. This is really an exciting little drone. I'm also excited about some of the hardware capabilities and we'll share those in upcoming videos. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.